Welcome to Conversations Live. For more than a decade, we brought you the best in books, entertainment, and current events. When the movers and shakers of the world have something to say to you, they say it to us first. Now, here's your host, Cyrus Webb. And welcome back, everyone, to Conversations Live. I'm your host, Cyrus Webb. Glad you all could join us once again. With you tuning in on the radio dial, we welcome you all back to our show. Those tuning in through our online affiliates, we're glad that you all could be with us, too, as well as our heart family. We're glad that you all could join us as well. Marshall Hilton is with us today to talk to us not only about his journey as an actor, but what it's been like for him to bring a host of characters to life and to be able to see the response from you as fans. He has a brand new project coming out at the end of this month called Primal Rage. We're going to talk to him about that project, uh, what it was like for him to work with the cast, and then, of course, let you all know how you all can stay connected with him as well. Marshall, hello to you, and welcome to the program. Uh, thanks for having me, Cyrus. Hey, the pleasure is definitely all mine. I want to start off by talking about this career because, I mean, you have been able to do, Marshall, I believe what so many people would love to do, and that is to be able to have longevity in your industry. What has that been like for you to kind of reflect on this career and, and the projects you've been a part of? Well, it's, you know, the only time I really have the opportunity to think about it is when somebody asks me that question hmm. because you know you're mired in it you know it's it's what you do um i was just answering a question in a, on an interview a little while ago is you know why and how do you keep doing this and and i really don't really know necessarily i mean what i thought i wanted to do at the beginning and why i wanted to do it is completely different you know than 25 30 years later um i think it you know, as far as a career, it has to do with basically perseverance. You know, how many times can you get beat down and get back up? Right. Uh, some people have a higher capacity to indulge in that kind of activity than others, you know. Right. Um, uh, I think Nick Foles just recently had a speech about, you know, the you know winning the Super Bowl and how many times he failed. Um, this is a business of, 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 of failure and, and how you handle it. Um, and how you get back up and, you know, a certain type of uh, myopic um, delusion that, you know, ah, they didn't, I didn't want to work with those people anyway, you know, that kind of stuff. Right. Um, and, you just, and just, you know, forging forward. Um, uh, I've been blessed in, in, in a bunch of different ways. You know, um, uh, I think the biggest thing is, is I was born in California. Um, I, I grew up 35, 30 miles from downtown Hollywood and near Malibu area. Um, I've always been around it. I didn't move here to become an actor. And I meet a lot of people that have timetables. They go, I'm going to move to LA and in five years, I'm going to do this or eight years or three years, you know, and, and they kind of, they kind of basically set themselves up to fail before they even really start. Right. For me, I've just, you know, you're nothing more than a headshot and a script and a friend that you've known for 15 years calling you say, dude, I got a role for you. Hmm. Uh, um, I didn't move here to, to, to do it. So it's here. It's around me. So, you know, that kind of hurdle is out of the way. So the, the timeline, I didn't have that kind of pressure. Right. Um, as far as, you know, how and why, you know, you know, I just think it's something that I do. You know, I, I kind of found a niche, and I enjoyed doing it. You know, in the beginning, I wanted to, you know, we all have designs of, you know, grandeur, the, you know, the bright lights, the baubles, you know, the A-list and all that kind of stuff. Right. But for me, i just been kept plugging along, you know. Um, I, you know, you, you get your headshot out there, you kind of work on, you know, getting better at what you do, and, and, you know, you just keep banging it out. You know, you just, the squeaky wheel gets greased, you know. You just keep reading, you keep doing stuff, and people call and say, we want you. You know, and, and as long as I get those opportunities, which are a different type of opportunity now that I'm in my 50s versus when I was in my 30s, you know, different roles, different types of roles, different size roles, right. different types of characters. You know, obviously, I'm transitioning into that old bastard when I was before I was the young <laughs> bastard, you know. Um, uh, so so now I just, you know, I, I kind of have a, a network of people that I've worked with over the years, you know, I've worked on like 60, 70 films or whatever. And you, you develop this kind of network of people that want to work with you again, some that don't, that's, you know, that's a given. Um, uh, and, you know, they, if they like what you do, you, you know, two or three, four times a year, you get a call from somebody and say, hey, man, I got this thing for you. Right. Um, and, and you kind of, more of the stuff I get now is more like offer stuff from people that I've worked with before than actual audition things, exactly. you know. Uh, and, 
that you know that's basically it. Just trying to stay positive in an overwhelmingly negative environment, um, and also having a life outside of acting. Um, you know, uh, if if your whole life is this creative pursuit, um, especially in Hollywood, you know, because what we do is kind of it's, it's pretty shallow when you think about it in the concept of the world. You know, we're not curing cancer. You know, we're not saving, you know, starving children. We're not, you know, fi- figuring out financial woes of the world. We're basically making little, little, uh, little uh, digital forms of distraction so people can kind of escape from the weight of the day and go do something different, you know, and we're not, we don't do things generally of that magnitude. So I think if, you know, your whole life is living for this, then it's probably a life wasted. And I got a lot of outside things that I do, a lot of other interests that that keep me, you know, busy, keep me motivated, keep me in the world and experience things, people, places, whatever. Um, And then you bring that into your work and, and it makes you kind of a, hopefully a little more, uh, rounded as a, as an actor, so you can bring different realities to a fictional world. Right, right. You know, you bring up a, a couple of points, uh, Marshall. I want to talk to you about, it. And, and it kind of goes into when I was prepping for your segment um, initially. I thought about uh, a conversation I had with, with actor Kim Coates, and we were talking about with him what it's been like for him to re- kind of reflect. And he, it was so funny to hear you say you don't really think about it. This I want to ask you about it because you're so busy doing it. But you, you have gone from being, even as he talked about, being that guy in that film to people actually knowing your name, knowing who you are. What has that been like for you to have other people recognize you? It's always odd. It's always very odd. Um, uh, it's cool in one respect, depending on where and when it happens. Um, and then it's always kind of odd because, you know, you're just kind of going through your day doing your thing. Um, and, uh, you know, it's, it, like if somebody walks up to you and there's this, you can see in their eye, there's recognition and there's this, usually this little smile and, and it's like, they know you, but you have never seen them in your life. <laughs> Right. You know, it's, it, it's, it's an interesting play. Um, you know, you, now you, you recognize it now and you go, okay, here it comes. You know, and then, and then they go, Hey, you were so, uh, yeah, yeah, I was, man. Did you dig it? Yeah, yeah, it was cool. Awesome. Um, and, and it, it's nice to feel that, um, that, that, and you never really know with society, especially pop culture, you really never really know if it's genuine. I think some people will see somebody that they recognize and their gut reaction is go- is to just get close and just kind of talk to you for a minute and figure it out, you know? Um, <laughs> then they turn to their friend afterwards and go, I never really liked that guy, but he was cool. You know, I mean, you never really know, you know? It, right. it's, 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 a, it's a weird experience. Um, but it means that... Um, at least you came across a visual image in something and, and you made an impression on somebody. And that is amazing. It's res- you got to respect that. Um, because you know, you, it's odd, you know, I mean, some people do what we do for that moment and they love that moment, the recognition, um, that same person likes to go to the theater and watch themselves. You know, I am on the other side of that. I hate going and watching myself on the theater. All I see is an old face and a big nose, you know? Um, and it's, it's just, it's very horrifying for me to do that. And so, you know, on, on the backside, I'm not one that that general, I'm like, you know, some people are like moths to a bright light boy. They just, they flock to that. Right. I kind of, I kind of tend to not be on that side of it as much, you know. I like to do it, and then meet cool people while I'm doing it, and then forge some relationships that you can keep, and and then you just, you know, moving on, and um, you know, and and c- to continue working. Um, but you know, it's it's when somebody comes up and says, "Dude, I saw you and so and so, and you were badass," and you go, "Awesome, <laughs> that's nice," you know. Right. Exactly. And I think that's the amazing thing, and I'm sure that happens quite a bit because there are so many great roles people have gotten to know you from. Marshall, I want to say for those who are just tuning in, he's on the radio side or online. You're listening to Conversations Live. We're already having a great conversation today with actor Marshall Hilton. We're talking with him not only about the journey to doing what he loves, but also what it's been like for him to be recognized for that work, which brings us to this year, Marshall, and the film Primal Rage. Now, you know, I will say again, the other thing, and you even alluded to this, that you've been able to bring so many different characters to life. 
you've been everyone. You've been cops. You've been, <laughs> you've been kind of, you know, we're kind of running the gamut of these different, um, these different characters. Talk to us about Primal Rage and what is it that attracted you to this film? Um, well, you know, it's, this, is, this is kind of one of those where I did get the offer because I had never met Patrick, the creator. It was, this was an audition one, okay. believe it or not, and it was two years ago. Um, it's actually longer than two years ago. We started shooting it, my part, two years ago. And uh, um, it was an audition. I met him um, at, at, a, at a place in Hollywood, same thing. You know, you get this kind of cryptic description of this dude, and you don't really have anything to go on, to be honest with you. So you kind of just go, okay, he's this, that, and this, and you, you know, get into your creative head like a kid and do this little playful thing, you know, and then you leave and you get a call. Um, uh, I think the moment that I really kind of underst- at least had an idea of what it was going to be is they called actually probably on my way home from the reading. I think I got a call from my mate manager, um, or an agent saying that Patrick wants to meet you at his studio. And so I went to his studio in the Valley out here in Los Angeles and, uh, very nondescript warehouse, big sliding metal door, you know, that kind of thing. And, mm. um, you know, Patrick, you know, answers the door. And he was 6'10". And I was like, holy shit, dude, you're tall. He goes, well, because yeah. he didn't ever stood up in the meeting when I first met him. He was just sitting in a chair behind a desk, you know, right. with th- several other people, you know. And, uh, and, and uh, um, so he takes me in, and the very first thing I see is the original um, uh, creation of Predator. And then I see Alien life-size painted and I mean these things were stunning and uh, all around the ceiling and all around the walls there were these monsters staring down at you these big giant mugs of terror of all kinds of beasts and uh, I looked at him and I just said I'm in I didn't even have to, I didn't have to say any I didn't even read I hadn't even read the script yeah um, and then and then and he and, and then he you know, he takes me into his office and we look at the concept trailer and, and then he says, we're going to shoot it up in the redwoods of near Oregon in California. And he takes me down the hall and I see this Bigfoot creation and these people working on it. And it just, you know, it was a no brainer stone, no brainer. I said, whatever it's going to be, you know, I'm in, you know, it's, you just, you know, you get a sense, you get these instinct things where you just go, uh, and for lack of a, 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 poor, a poor taste analogy, it's kind of like pornography. Mm. You know it when you see it, right? Right, right. It's, un- it's un- it couldn't be anything else. Um, and that's what this was. And um, so, you know, we sat down and talked a little bit about this, that, and the other thing, and when it was going to shoot and things of that nature. And then I got the script and, um, you know, kind of, yeah, I had a few questions, but I kind of had a grip on him, the, the, the character, pretty much right away. Um, it was a little different. I had kind of played him a little more country when we met. I think I was wearing a, my, one of my old trench coats and, and an old hat and cowboy thing and whatever and boots and stuff like that. And they ended up kind of taking him a little bit more refined and a little bit more boisterous, you know, right. kind of more of a mouthpiece and a bit of a hard ass, a little a bit of a, you know, he was kind of an ass. Um, and, uh, so yeah, but that, that's kind of how I got, I got started on the, on the project and, um, this is, yeah, it was, it was fun. It was one of the better shoots I've been on in 20 years. I can tell you that. Oh, wow. Well, I'm, I know that yeah. Patrick loves to hear hear that. Uh, Marshall, I mean, considering, again, the body of work that you have, you know, and I should say this, too. I mean, the, the way that this film is being marketed is so great and so different because it's being shown in, you know, in theaters for this one special day, February the 27th. Of course, I'm sure we'll be able to get it later, later through the, the digital format, uh, being able to get it there. But, I mean, new media is a big part. You and I were kind of kidding about that before we began this segment, that the world that we live in now is so different where the social media is such a big part of it. Um, you've been doing a lot of that. I've noticed when I was prepping for your segment uh, in you know, doing a lot of interviews like this one, which, we, again, we appreciate. Talk to us about the changing landscape. What has that been like for you to kind of maneuver, uh, Marshall? It's, I, it, it's, it's interesting, you know. Um, uh, there's so oh – God, it's, you know, you could do a whole – you could do a whole week of shows on, on, <laughs> on, on, on the stuff that's going on with social media. Um, right. Part of it is real. Part of it's real, and part of it's complete fabricated nonsense. 
Mm. Um, uh, you know, he, for me and, and people that are, you know, friends, we'll use that in quotes, um, followers, things like that. Um, I'm sure right now they're just going, dude, why don't you just shut up about this movie already, you know, because you have to kind of, you figure you've got to be out there, and it has connected the world in a lot of ways. I have made connections and via the Internet that I probably never would have made. Um, I'm ex- you're exposed to uh, some of the amazing things that humanity is capable of doing, you know. Um, you see these wonderful, wonderful animals and, 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 and reservations. You see kids that are four years old playing Mozart, you know, on a piano. I mean, you see this, the amazing things that humanity is capable of, and then you also see an overwhelming amount of the stupidity, narcissism, and just outright self-indulgent crap that man is, is, is uh, um, capable of as well. Right. Um, and so you, you feed, you have to kind of navigate through that. Um, but, you know, you can, you can put something up and it'll, it's available to somebody in, in Britain inside of 30 seconds. Right. I mean, that's amazing technology. Exactly. Um, and it's, it's incredibly dangerous though, too, you know, um, you know, so you have to figure out for me, I figured out a while back. Um, through a couple of posts several years ago that, you know, you can easily weaponize this thing um, yeah. for, agen- for agenda, for, for communications, for manipulation, and, and just, you know, if you're a brand, it can be good because you can you get it out there. Um, but you can also, if you're a brand, let's say you're a brand worth a million, and then you come out of the box one day, uh, you're worth a million dollars of revenue to somebody in some project or five million or whatever it is. And you come out of the box and you say something political. You can instantly take that million dollar value. And because the country is basically divided right down the middle politically and, and, and with ideologies and stuff, and you can just take half your brand and just throw it away. Yeah. And so, you know, when people are investors in, in your brand or whatever, um, you know, they're expecting to get that million dollar value with you being involved with something. They didn't get into it for half of that, (laughs) you know? Um, And so you, I tend to kind of just kind of, I have my own views and my own opinions about a lot of things. And I think those are intimate private conversations with myself that, 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 that I don't need to, I don't feel the need to have to go out there and blast it on people about it. So I tend to go down the middle. Um, you know, I, I kind of use it for information. I find little unique things every now and then that I find funny and clever. And, you know, I'll put them out there and take a few shots and then get it off there as fast as possible. I just do it for my friends, you know. Um, uh, but it's, it's, um, it's an interesting medium. But I, I don't know if it's uh, in, in the grand scheme of things. I'm not sure that it has the reach that um, people purport it to have, you know. Um, hmm. uh, you know these uh, these algorithms are filtering now. You know right. they filter, right? And they're manipulate they're manipulated. They're created by man t- for one thing, and that is to to sell advertising. That's it. Um, so I don't, you know, I might I'm maxed out on my page, and if I put a post out, I guarantee you, five thousand people aren't seeing my stuff. Probably a third of that, if if that, are actually seeing stuff. So right. there there are limits, you know, to to the technology um, in regards to that. Um, but it is it is out there. You do get to call interesting people and see interesting things and, and connect with some folks and individuals um, that you might not have before and, and, and trade a message here, say, you know, I dig your work there, you know, whatever. Um, and, but that, that's, that's presently what we have and whether or not I know that I'm not getting all my people and all my fans are seeing my stuff. You still feel compelled that, well, this is what I do have. I do have a bit of control over this message. Right. Um, and, and I'm going to put it out there, you know, because, I mean, what other avenue do you have? If, you know, I mean, I have a publicist and I'm talking to you. That's another one that I have that maybe somebody else does it. Right. You know, for sure. Um, you know, so it's just it's, it's one method of communication. And um, uh, I find it intriguing, and I find it horrifying at the same time. 
<laughs> well, look, I, I totally understand. It, it is an interesting creature for sure. Uh, one, though, that has definitely kept me connected with people like you, though, Marshall, so I'm appreciative for that. But, you know, we say on this program all the time, when you use responsibly and respectfully, you know, social media can be an amazing tool. And I love the fact that you're able to use yours to not only to, you know, talk about projects like Primal Rage, like we've been doing here today, but also in sharing other things, too. You're very giving of your time, especially on Twitter, I noticed that, being able to sharing other things that people are doing, and I think that says a whole lot. Again, everyone, Marshall Hilton has been our guest. Great conversation with you, Marshall. We've been talking with him not only about his career, but also the film that's going to be available for you guys on February the 27th called Primal Rage. Now, you all can stay connected with Marshall and everything he's doing through social media. If you go to his website, which is MarshallHilton.com, and it's Marshall with one L, MarshallHilton.com, that'll kind of lead you to his social media, but make sure you all are definitely following him on Twitter, like I am, at Marshall Hilton, and you can be able to stay updated with all the great things that he's doing there and also the announcement that he's been making like interviews like this and also other things going on with Primal Rage for sure. Marshall, congratulations to you again and everything and I look forward to our next conversation together. Oh, you know, just any time, you know, I, I, I tend to like to kind of just chat about stuff, you know, and that's, that's what old people do, you know, I got my coffee, life is good. <laughs> Well, look, hey, life and coffee is definitely good. I totally can relate to that. Marshall, thanks again. And look, hey, look, have a great one, and congratulations again on the new project. Thank you very much, Cyrus. God bless. Uh, thank you for that. God bless you as well. And we thank your audience for tuning in to another great segment of Conversations Live. Until next time, I'm your host, Cyrus Webb, saying, as always, enjoy your day, enjoy your life, enjoy your world. Make sure you take out time to enjoy some good music as well as a great book. Thank you all for choosing Conversations Live today. You all make it a great one.